Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is going to be a video series about dealing with the processes with someone when someone you love dies. There's going to be three steps prior to the person's death, the processes that come with once you have heard the person is going to die, and then the steps you have to take once you bury the person. This particular video is going to be about all of the steps that are necessary prior to the person's death. And as I said, this is going to be an interview video with someone who had to deal with the death of a loved one. Okay, so we're going to interview you on the preparing for the death of a loved one. And this is for the viewing audience in YouTube. And you recently had a death of a loved one. So the first question we have is, can you explain to us the process of finding and reviewing the decedent's funeral, express funeral and burial wishes? So basically what this involves, so basically what this is involved is that you want to ask your loved one before they die if they have a will. If they have a will, you need to know where that will is located. Whether they have a safe deposit box, it's box or a safe deposit box at the bank or a safe deposit box in their home. You need to locate the will, the will so you can find out what their wishes are. Next question. What's the process about power of attorney notify agent under any power of attorney or if you yourself are the power of attorney i was the power of attorney even though i did not have it written in legal form i was considered the power of attorney because i was the one who handled all of my mother's affairs so therefore a person before that person dies should have a power of attorney in place so they would know who is going to handle that person's affairs as far as their estate and anything that they have that they wish to be done with whether they want to donate it or give it to friends charities okay so can you tell us about preparing and arranging for the obituary when it came to the obituary, basically what I did was I prepared in advance once I was notified or told that my mother was going to die. I went online and I saw a website where I can download a program where I can make her obituary. You can have obituary done professionally, which will most likely cost you more money, or you can download one from the website, which is what I did. And I did it myself, and I only paid $29.95 uh, $29 for it. Okay. Arranging for mortuary, cemetery, burial, or cremation. So what is that process? Well, the process with that is, if your loved one has told you what they were going to do, if they have in place a burial spot, you need to find out where that information is. You need to find out where the burial plot is, what exactly, what it is exactly that they want done, whether they want it to be buried or whether they want cremation. This, of course, should be stated in their will. And if it's stated in their will, then you should grant their wishes. So basically, when my mother, before she passed, she had a will in place. In her will, she stated that she, who was in charge of her arrangements and her burial because she wanted to be buried. However, uh, the person that she had in charge had died. And so that meant a secondary person, which was my sister, and she lived in another state. So therefore, being the power of attorney and being in the area, I had to handle that situation. Okay. The next question is, arrange for funeral slash burial services. So, that involves going to the, the, the cemetery. If the person has a plot at the cemetery, 
you would have to go to the cemetery. You would have to find the information if your loved one has paid for a burial plot. They will have papers on hand indicating the opening and the closing, which means the opening means opening up the ground. The closing is closing up the ground after the body has been laid into that plot. That involves monies, of course, uh, a certain amount of uh, funds. And you go to the cemetery and basically what you're doing is you're letting them know in advance that your loved one has died. And you need to look at the paperwork to see what it is that you need to do during that time. And as I am aware of, the price was cheaper to prepare for burial when the loved one was alive than when the loved one was dead, correct? That's correct. When a person is alive at that time, it is cheaper, which is something that I didn't know, it's cheaper to get a burial plot. However, if the person has died after the fact, in order to get the burial plot and the, the opening and the closing is much more. My mother had the burial plot, the opening and the closing was already paid for, and so therefore, our going to get the opening and the closing was cheaper. Are there any reasons other than for taxes that you should keep records of the payments for a funeral and other expenses related to the death? Other than taxes, you should, you should always keep it just in case uh, you go to court. And of course, I had to go to the courts. And they did want, they wanted to know, and this may vary from state to state, they wanted to know how much I paid for her burial. And also, it would be best to keep it in, uh, for insurance purposes. So what were your experiences in dealing with the wills, um, trust, and anything like that? My mother had a will, and dealing with the will was... Uh, a little more difficult because the first person that she had on the will was my older sister who had passed away herself. So then that left the secondary person which was my sister who lived out of state and that was difficult. I had to take the will to the courthouse in order for me to get a letter of uh, administration, which a letter of administration means that you are getting a release of that person's assets or estate. And my mother, since she lived in a nursing home, I had to get this letter to have a release of her funds at the nursing home. In order for me to do that, I had to take a will to the courthouse. I had to get my sister to sign and give me authority so I can get the uh, funds released and in order for me to get a copy of the death certificate. And all of those processes are after the person dies? Yes. So the will and the trust, there's nothing needed for that prior to death other than preparation for the death. As if, if the person wants to be buried or cremated, correct? Yes. Are the life insurance policies pertinent prior to the person's death? Yes. In what way? The life insurance is important because you want to make sure that that person has funds to pay for their death. Now, it's not only just paying for their death, but there's also the possibility that the life insurance will pay for the arrangement depending on the amount. However, you have to wait for those funds to go through in order for that life insurance to kick in so those so the necessary things can be paid for such as a casket, uh, her being cremated the, or the, your loved one being cremated they're being made up. There are a lot of things that go into play with that regarding a person uh, as far as their life insurance. And from my understanding, the life insurance company would not release the entire life insurance amount until after 
it the death has been posted they want the obituary and the death certificate correct that's correct the next question is what is the process of locating other important documents, relationship forms, accounts, investments, any of that? Have you had anything to deal with that process? Basically, I didn't have to deal with that process. I only had to locate the will. I had to locate her, her wishes from the standpoint of whether she wanted to be buried or cremated. Of course, her will did not state that. But I do know that she stated it verbally that she would want to be buried instead of cremated. And those were the only processes that I went through with that. Do you have to advise Social Security, Medicaid, or any other agency prior to the person's death? I haven't had that experience, but because she was in a nursing home, they uh, Medicaid and Social Security would have been contacted by the nursing home. Other than that, I believe that a person, if they have someone that is going through, uh, that is going to die, I believe those agencies should be contacted prior to their death. Okay, so also, have you had to have you had to look into investigating refunds on insurance or cancellations of subscriptions prior to death? Basically, all those things were taken care of. She, if she, if a person has uh, cable, telephone bill, electrical, you should make sure all those things are taken care of. If not, then that person will still be billed for those things, and that is something that should be handled in advance. Um, and one last question. Obtain valuations of assets as appropriate. As you mentioned, your mother was in a nursing home, so it seems that a lot of these processes, or this one in particular, were prepared or done far be far prior to her death because of her being in a nursing home. And as I would like to repeat the question, obtain valuations of assets as appropriate. Yes. So since she was in the nursing home before that process, all those things were taken care of and everybody would need to handle those accordingly depending on whether the person lives in the house or if they're in a nursing home, all those things should be handled in advance. Okay, so this video was about preparing before the person dies, even before you hear that the person is going to die. So we thank you very much for answering our questions and we hope that the viewing audience can gain some insight into this very sad situation. Thank you very much.